This is this is loud and there's not anybody here that knows how to turn it down. So uh, I don't know, Seth. Can you give it a shot? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. There we go. So I'll just keep talking that way. He'll know what to do there. So we're glad you're here with us today. Let's see. I think that's that sounds about right. I think it sounds good. Yeah. And if you're worshiping with us online. And I'll tell you what, Grover and Sherry aren't here today, so so I'm doing everything, and I can't. Oh, there's where I put my camera control. All right, I forgot they weren't going to be here today, and so I didn't recruit anyone. So here we go. So now, camera, you can see me if you want to worship it online. Thank you so much for joining in with us today. Today is All Saints Sunday. We remember those who we have left behind who have left us, I guess, behind. Um, and it's also the last week in our Do Unto Others study. And as this series draws to close, we may feel more or less resolved in our openness to each other, loving our neighbor, including relatives, co-workers, acquaintances, and strangers as ourselves is no simple task. We need God. We need the love of God to show us mercy and strength to love as God loves. We need the story of Jesus, the one who loved across lines that had been drawn up in the society of his day, but who also stood for the least and the lost. 
And we need faith that no matter the strain of differing positions, policies, and politics, we will move forward in love. Disagreeing need not be antithetical to love and grace. Listen to our prelude and center yourself for worship. join me in the opening prayer. We gather around the light of Christ as the center and guiding light of our lives. Loving and hope-filled God, we ask you to stay close in our lives as we move into an unknown future. Wrap us in your love and invite us to go and do likewise, to do unto others in ways that build up your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the center that holds, and in the power of the Holy Spirit that transforms. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. Hey, remain standing just for a moment. We're going to go ahead and do what we call passing the peace. It's our chance to bless each other with God's peace. And we're going to do it today with a high five. Peace of Christ be with you and also with you. And then afterwards, there's always a couple of discussion questions. So find two or three people to talk to. But let's bless each other with God's peace.
seated. I think, I think it's time for our kids' talk, right? So kids, come on up. Come on down. Matthew chapter 22. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, 
and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 4. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us, and whoever is not from God does not listen to us. But from this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loves us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from the, him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. So, there you go. Let's just leave it right there for a minute, Langston. Thank you so much for helping out with that. Uh, I'm going to come back to what I what I have planned to say today in just a minute. But first, I, I want to uh, let's see what I've got next here. Uh, I came across this post on Instagram by this guy named Ian Simpkins. I don't know him at all. He's a Christian, uh, posts a lot of things that I think were thoughtful. The caption on this post, he wrote, I think this one's going to get me in trouble. Okay, well, let's just see. Uh, here's what he posted. Both are made in the image of God. Both of them. That can be really easy to forget in a cultural moment like this one. Whenever I was critical of someone, a mentor of mine used to ask, have you prayed for this person half as much as you criticized them? It was always convicting. It still is. We don't stop there, but that's a good start. This isn't primarily a call to criticize less, but to pray more. This is as much about protecting my own heart from bitterness as anything. We, Christians especially, have a sacred responsibility to call out evil sin and exploitation whenever and wherever we see it. Being a Christ follower means forfeiting the luxury of neutrality in the face of injustice. But in my opposition, engagement, in truth speaking, I want to always be careful not to fall into the same hate I oppose. When we respond to hate with hate, we become what we oppose. When we respond to hate with hate, so we're hating, we become what we oppose. Now, I think he had a really good point. Uh, and wherever you fall, on the political divide. I don't know, and let's be honest, I don't care, okay? And you don't know where I fall. You probably got some guesses, okay, good. I got guesses about you. We can talk about each other, no, anyway. <laughs> but, the term Christian, that is a pretty charged term. What you mean by Christian can vary, and depending on who's using the term, right? Uh, people mean different things by it. What people think qualifies someone as a Christian is up for debate. Some people would say, well, they're, they're, they're part of this church, so they're a Christian. 
Or they've prayed this prayer so they're a Christian. Or they live in this way so they're a Christian. Or they take this position on issues so they're a Christian. There's a lot of debate and a lot of question about what that term really means. But technically, at its root, Christian means a little Christ or Christ Jr. It, you, could, you could say that being a Christian is one who follows Christ. Now, if that's my definition, and, and that's my, Richard, that's me right now, that's my working definition. A Christian is one who follows Christ. Does that mean a whole lot of stuff? Oh yeah, it means a lot of stuff. Are, are there, are there uh, can you come off, can you branch off that with different ideas and concepts? Yes, you can. It, it, it's, it's a very uh, meaningful term. But at root, one who follows Christ. So, if a Christian is one who follows Christ, the question is, are you a Christian? Do you follow Christ? Well, what did Christ say to do? Well, we heard it in our scripture today, didn't we? Jesus, now Jesus said a lot of things. And probably not, I, you know, I have no idea what percentage of the things Jesus said are recorded. We don't know. I mean, he, he it says he taught daily it, like during Passover week in, in the temple, and the, all those messages aren't recorded. But when Jesus says, this is the first commandment, did you hear the scripture Shelley read? Jesus said the first and greatest commandment is to love God and to love your neighbor. That's what Jesus said was most important. Now, that first John scripture, I mean, Jesus is really clear when he says, the first and greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and the second is like it. Now, that's interesting. That phrase is like it. The word there in, in the New Testament is the word Homo, homeos. We get our, our, our cognates, our words like homosexual, homogeneous, uh, the word for confession, homo legato, say the same thing. It means the same thing. So when Jesus says the first command is love God all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and, 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 and mind, and the second is equal to it. It's the same as it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, Christian, what well, do you follow Christ? Well, what does that mean? Do you love God and do you love your neighbor? Uh, there's a lot more things you can add to it. Sure, the whole Sermon on the Mount you can add to it. But Jesus said, this is the most important, the greatest command. Love God, love your neighbor. Are we doing that? Today, we, uh, this week, th this series, we've talked about uh, <sighs> humility, respect, kindness, compassion, and today, last study, last week in this study, we talk about love. Now, these scriptures, I just want to share with you a few thoughts that the Matthew scripture and the first John scripture, and the first John scripture could not be any clearer than, the, than what John said in this passage. I just want to share with you some thoughts of what I get from that. First of all, Loving God is as important as loving your neighbor. In fact, one way you could put it is, how do I show I love God? I love my neighbor. That's what 1 John says. How do I love God? I love God by loving my neighbor. So being hyper-spiritual, never missing a Sunday at church, having a whole row of perfect attendance Sunday school pens, reading the Bible through every month, uh, or walking around with your nose in the air, being all pious, that does not mean anything if you don't love your neighbor. Loving your neighbor is as important as loving God. We love our neighbors because God loves us. See, that's what 1 John says. We love because God loves us. It's not because they're such wonderful people. Some of your relatives, neighbors, co-workers, acquaintances, friends, some of them might be wonderful people. 
Probably some of them aren't, right? <laughs> we don't love them. Oh, how about that person that disagrees with you on everything? And you just cannot believe, why can't they see the truth? A lot of people are not the most lovable. But we don't love them because they're lovable. This sounds strange, but that's really got nothing to do with it. We love others because God loves us. That's why. That's what 1 John said. Number three. There are six of these, by the way. And we're moving fast. Loving our neighbor means I give, I sacrifice, I suffer for their benefit. Uh, that first John passage says this. God's love, this is verse 9 of chapter 4. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. This love that God has for us, that's supposed to be what causes us to love others. What kind of love was it? It was a giving love. It was a sacrificing love. It was a suffering love. Some people are hard to love. Some people, it takes all you got to love. Some people are going to ask more of you than you want to give. But loving our neighbor means I give, I sacrifice, I suffer for their benefit. Parents know this. You sit up all night with a sick kid. You don't do it because after they've thrown up three times, they smell so wonderful. You do it because you love them. And since you love them, you're suffering. You're being patient. You're sacrificing. Loving your neighbor means I give, I sacrifice, I suffer for their benefit. And this is one that I think is really an important thing to say. Loving our neighbor means taking the first step. Did you see that pattern in 1 John? John says, Look, listen, we didn't love God. God first loved us and God sent his son. God took the first step. God made the first move. God didn't just sit and say, well, if they talk to me, I'll talk to them. Well, if they say hi to me, I'll say hi to them. Well, if they say they're sorry, I'll say I'm sorry. Well, if they smile, I'll smile. Well, if they help me, I'll help them. This love in 1 John chapter 4 that John says is our pattern for how we're supposed to love each other, God took the first step. So it's going to take courage. It's going to take a determination. It might be risky. But we're called to take the first step in loving others. To reach out our hand first. To smile first. To speak first. To humble ourselves first. To be kind first. We have to take the first step. We show God to others by our love. And we're going to sing in a little bit later on in the service. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Richard, that's such an old song. It's old Jesus, people. That's an old song, Richard. Yeah, is there anything according to Scripture we read today that's more true? They'll know we are Christians by our love. It says uh, in 1 John chapter 4, uh, that, well, let me find the verse here. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I can't find my verse right now, but 1 John chapter 4 says, uh, oh, verse 12, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. No one's seen God, but they can see you and me loving other people. We show God to others by our love. <sighs> There's a lot of ways we try 
to show God to other people. A lot of ways we think will be a great witness. But loving others is the way that Jesus said to do it. And then lastly, you cannot be right with God without loving your neighbor. Persons who say they love God but they don't love their neighbor, what did John say? He said they're a liar. They're a liar. They say they love God. Oh, I'm such a good Christian. I am faithful to my Lord Jesus. But I treat everybody around me like dirt. They're not right with God. They are not right with God. And you cannot be mean-spirited, stingy, selfish, and be right with God. Oh, I just, there's nothing, nothing between my soul and the Savior. Except the fact that I'm a mean, grumpy person who's not been nice to anybody since 2001. <laughs> you want to get right with God? Get right with the people around you. Now, and I don't know what I've got next here. Maybe that's the close. Okay, good. Here you go. If we want to be God's light in the world, it won't be through our bumper stickers or our opinions or the memes we share. It will be through our love for others. We love because he first loved, loved us. You can't wait for the other person to take the first step. You have to. Does God love you? then you must love the people around you. The different people, the smug people, the people who look different, the people who believe different, the people who vote differently, the people who infuriate you. You must love the people around you. And you do it by taking the first step and being generous and sacrificial toward them. If you want to be a Christian, you must love others even when it is not deserved. It is not welcome. It is not reciprocated. It is not appreciated. You still must love others. We still take the first step in giving and sacrifice for others. That is what Jesus will do. We're going to sing our prayer song now. And uh, Christine had us raising our hands. So we're also, so this week we're going to do the the Latin verse after the English verse. So we've lifted our hands and now we're going to speak in tongues. So uh, we're covering all the bases on All Saints Day, see? Uh, so we'll sing our prayer song and we'll enter into our All Saints commemoration and I'll give you instructions on that in just a moment. start with an opening prayer uh, then there will be an opportunity uh, for you to, to to come forward and uh, I'm gonna turn the mic on turn mine off testing testing there we go uh, the, after we after, after the prayer there will be time for you to come forward 
uh, speak the name of someone you want to remember, then light a candle. Pick the candle up here, light here. Start in, start in the back. Rick and I experienced people starting in the middle and trying to burn in our fingers at another prayer experience. Uh, and so, and then Tyler will ring a bell, and then next person. So, so I'll just, I'll, I'll just model it for you. It would be, I would say, uh, James David Jones, Alberta Rose Simpson Jones. And I would light the candle. Tyler, are you ready to ring the bell? Yeah. Now. So that's how it'll work. Um, can you do more than one person? Yes, of course you can. Uh, so let's let's begin. Uh, there is a prayer, and we're beginning. God, we thank you for the lives, legacies, and memories of those of all of all these dear saints. We remember that the scriptures tell us that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. When death comes close, hold us. Christ, when life is uncertain, guide us. Spirit, when truth is hidden, teach us. You alone are our hope. You alone are our redeemer. You alone give new life. So you're invited to come forward to remember love. Fisher, uh, Eleanor, and Norman Hoffman. Harry Hoskinson mm -hmm. and Mimi Armstrong. Mary Ann Butler, Tom Culberson, Jason Stew. Marty and Doug McCree. My father, Yun Pu Chen. I would add Mimi Armstrong, Elaine Shields, Ellen Detillo.
Beverly and Gerald Hollingsworth. Timothy Watkins. Langston's go to next. Romans chapter 8 tells us, For I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth or nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints that have gone before us. We give you thanks for our ancestors who have shown us by their lives what it is to be faithful. We give you thanks for our loved ones who have taught us your love in ways close to our heart. We mourn those whose lives were cut short. We miss those who were dear to us. We grieve the unexpected losses in our lives. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the saints who are now at home with you. And we know that through your love, we have the promise of eternal life. Through your love, we have the hope of new life now. Through your love, we live in the joy of resurrection. For all the saints, we give you thanks, O God. Amen. We've got a special song uh, as we continue.
thank you. Uh, that song, uh, Aunt Mangers Lead You In, it's called Hear You Me by Jimmy Wall. His little rhythm recorded that song. In case you're wondering. Okay, it's time for our offering so we could have our ushers come on next. All right, hold on to that tight. St. Hildy. I would say St. Marie, but you know, it's kind of dubious. No, it's not at all. I listen to the kids talk. Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for your great love for us. And God, we thank you for this, for the great crowd of witnesses that have gone before us, all the saints for all the centuries. God, we pray that your peace would be with them, and God, your peace would surround us. And God, we pray you put your blessing on this offering as we give back to you in worship. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Langston, this is going to be your biggest challenge following what's going on now. You're a smart guy. I got confidence. Let's go to the next slide. The liberating God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts with joy. Lift them up to God. Let's give praise to the author of freedom. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And it is right to give our thanks and praise, and, and so we we are thankful for for the for the gifts of peace and abundance that continue. And so we lift up our voices in celebration of you, holy, holy, holy are you. We join all the prophets and the saints. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
we join the parade of justice. Blessed are they who come in the name of the Lord. We add our cries and exclamations, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, Lord, and blessed is your son, Jesus. To those who are imprisoned by status, law, illness, poverty, gender, race, and disease, he said, your belief has set you free. You are a child of God. He invited disciples, friends, and strangers alike to his table. He proclaimed God's grace to all with whom he broke bread. And he proclaimed God's love to all with whom he shared the cup. And he told us to remember, you are one at this table, the table of grace. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ comes again in this meal we eat together. Holy Spirit, transform this meal and transform this body so that we might be free to love without condition, invite without hesitation, and go without reservation, and proclaim you and your love to all the world. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The bread we break is the bread of life. The cup we share is the cup of salvation. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So if you are using one of the single serve communion cups, you simply peel back the first layer, eat the wafer, the body of Christ. You peel back the second layer, drink the juice, the blood of Christ is shed for you. Communion in the United Methodist Church is open communion, which means you don't have to be a member of the church or a Methodist. All are invited because it's Christ's table. It's not ours. Uh, you'd simply come down the center aisle when it's time. Go to either side. Receive a small piece of bread. Small cup. Eat, eat the bread. Small cup of juice. Drink that. And return by the side aisle. So if I could have my servers come forward, please. There we go. You're invited to come to the Lord's table.
So, they'll know we are Christians by our love. That was our message. That's what we're going to affirm today as we sing. Try it. Uh, let's stand together as we sing. I apologize. Two weeks out, and I might be facing up. What's what we got there, Langston? What's what's next? Anything? Okay. We just finished one drive for uh, Emerge Center Against Domestic Violence, and we're getting ready to start our holiday drive. But boy, I just see the spelling error. Do you see that? Uh, it's it's a holiday drive. <laughs> well, that's how us hicks say it. It's a holiday drive. Uh, but anyway, we'll fix that at some point. Uh, but anyway, Aviva's a great organization. They serve, I, I, I just hesitate to say thousands, because I'm sorry, it is thousands of foster children in southern Arizona. Uh, and give them a good Christmas every year. So we help with that. And you'll get more information. I think there might be some in your bulletin, but there's some each week in the church email, and there'll be some in the bulletin next week for sure. But we'll start that. And we'll have to start the drive before the Christmas tree's up. So I think you'll be able to handle that. Uh, we'll have a place for the gifts. If, when you bring them in, then we'll get the Christmas tree up when it's Advent time. Uh, is there another one there? Oh, the upper room. I think there's just a, we did a, 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 a sermon on the upper room devotional a few weeks ago, and a lot of you picked those up. This is the beginning of the month. I think there are maybe just a couple more left out in the narthex. You've been good about picking those up. Is there anything else, Langston? Oh, there's not. Well, excellent. So, um, as we go out, first of all, let's stand, and we're going to sing the last verse of our theme song for the last time. Uh, Christ has broken down the wall. And as we go out, may people who encounter us at the polling place on Tuesday, at work on Monday, in the grocery store this afternoon, in our neighborhoods, Around our kitchen tables, may the people who encounter us know we are Christians by our love. Seth?
Thanks for worshiping with us. We'll see you next week.